That would be me. Look who we're hanging with. Brian O'Halloran. Jason David Frank. Humberto Ramos. Please do not change channel. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometra. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't done it yet, go hit subscribe. It's right down there. You can come back over and over again. You can see fantastic authors, artists, filmmakers, YouTubers, creators of all kinds. We've got musicians right here on the show. You can learn everything there is to know about the independent arts community, and we hope you'll do that. We are here hanging with Rafaela Marie Rizzo. Rizzo. Sorry Rizzo. About that. Rizzo. Like, See that? Like, Not like Greece. Like pizza. Like like pizza. Rizzo. Yes. I like that. She's the author of Thank You for Your Thank You for the Shoes. Thank you for the Thank shoes. Thank you for the shoes. You're welcome. <laughs> We're done. No. Uh, tell us about Thank You for the Shoes. Thank You for the Shoes is a, an immigrant story. Um, it is based on the life of a 13-year-old boy who left southern Italy in the early 1900s during a mass wave of exit from southern Italy to the Americas. Many went to South America, many uh -huh. came to North America, and during that period of time there was a huge uh, push on the part of, by American agents trying to bring young and mature men who could work hard either in coal mines or to build roads. Agents literally went and recruited these people to wow. come to build the country. So they, you know, they built the Brooklyn Bridge, they worked in the coal mines, they built the shore road uh, along the Erie Canal. And this man was um, 13 years old, he was fatherless, but the motivation for coming to America was to find his father's grave, a man he never wow. knew who had come to America in the earlier wave when he was just a baby to earn money and come back to, to get the family. To get the family, yeah. but he died before he could do that. So this child wanted to find his father's grave, and the story focuses on the detours, the challenges, and the triumphs and the joys that happened during that there journey. There are so many, uh, when you look back at that period, that era in time, there are so many transformative journeys from Europe to America, um, and, and they, 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 not, they, they shaped the country, they sure but did. they also uh, changed the young men and women who made those journeys a great deal. Um, what 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 was your favorite part of researching for this book? Because I this is I know this is a very historical grounded fiction. Yeah, lots so. of lots. Actually, it's more of a, a memoir biography. Okay. Uh, and the reason is that I used my father's life as the basis for the story. Oh wow! And I had to do a, a tremendous amount of research. I enjoyed going to the coal mines in Pennsylvania. And that was absolutely fascinating. And to know that the coal mines had to keep reports of injuries and, and these huge volumes. Wow. And also to discover that the, you know, we're, we live in a digital age. Mm -hmm. And to discover that we think everything is online, but it's not. Yeah. Historical societies across America have original volumes that you have to go in person. It's a struggle right now. It, it is. is. I, I know. Uh, that major immigration ports have been working very, very hard to try to digitize older records. And, but there's 250 years of history as the United States, and then there's 400 years more. Before that, and yeah. when you go back to the countries of origin, it's a lot of paper. What what created the immigration and the impetus for it. You know, we all have heard the story of the Irish. They came because of the potato, potato famine. famine. But what a lot of people don't know is that southern Italy and that mass migration that happened, actually there were two waves of it, happened because the people were starving to death. And as the Italians called it, they were morti di fame. 
and um, they had suffered in that area a major tsunami as a result of an earthquake. Uh, they had really experienced tremendous economic and social pressures because Italy was not a, a country until the 1860s, essentially. So while here in the U.S. we were fighting a war between the states, Joseph Garibaldi was trying to organize the people to fight for unification. But the southern Italians fought for unification thinking it would improve their lot in life. And what they learned was that as soon as this happened, that the unification occurred, he presented Italy as a, on a plate to the king and so turned it into a feudal state, a monarchy. And it, unfortunately, the peasants in the south were the ones, if they had a patch of land, they were taxed and uh, to pay for the big cities well, and I for think everything we, else. We tend to look at things from our perspective in the world today <clears throat> where we see a planet of nations. Um, and we forget that nation building is a process. And whether you are Great Britain or the United States or, or Italy, um, from city states to nation states is a very long journey and a very painful journey. Um, you know, getting where we are today it didn't happen overnight. And, and these are the people who built the world that we and, live in. And we are very fortunate because it, it required a tremendous amount of courage. And uh, there were, you know, there were, it was very little to help, but which is fine because it made them stronger. And it also made them more committed to be Americans. Yeah, well, and, and, and so for, that was and the... And for people like this young man that you're following, based on your uh, father, um, this is a one-way ticket. It's not like Pan Am is going no, back no, and forth. No, this is, this is a one-way ticket, and, and it was for his father. It was it a one-way ticket. So it, that, that's a lot of courage to say, I'm going to give up what little I have for nothing in hopes of doing better. Exactly, and, and I liken it to if we were, if you and I today were told we needed to go to the moon, but we are not trained, we don't have a special suit, we didn't go through all this flight training and, and depressurization and all those things. They didn't have phones, they didn't have video, they knew what they knew by word of mouth, most of it wrong. They were all told America was the land of milk and honey and the streets were paved with gold and um, instead what it was was workers all piled into some rooming houses working from very early in the morning to late at night and then trying to escape the fact that you know the kind of like especially in the coal mines essentially the people owed their lives to the company store because the way the structure was it was very difficult well, this book was a a personal satisfaction to write. It sounds like a, a very much a passion project. It was you. a passion project. And I'm working on a second book okay. that has some of the characters in this book in the second book um, to see the Americanization process of the next generation because wow. it's it, we get distance pretty quickly. It, we do. From, and in today's world, um, we tend to look at the news in a vacuum. And, um, but in America in particular, the immigrant journey is, uh, it has a path, it has a course. Um, we see recurring themes from every wave of immigrants, the Italians and then the Irish, um, and now some of the Spanish and from, from the Central American countries. There's a pattern to this, and there's a process to this. And that second generation that Americanizes themselves or assimilates, um, and then usually another generation before they reach back to those original roots and share that and make that a part of our culture. And so that your next book is going to be even just as interesting as your first one, I'm sure. Well, I and hope you're gonna so. learn just as much. And well, yeah, you know, I, author, author on part. the web, authors we learn as much as we share when we're writing. Absolutely. I learned a tremendous amount. I thought I knew a great deal about it and then I went and found out that as I was exploring things, I learned, first of all, I learned a lot about where the records of the world are. 
I will tell you that, you know, I'm a member of Ancestry and all of that, but that was not as helpful as going to a local community and going to the churches in those communities uh, and getting I have, records. Uh, I have a very distant cousin uh, who is in um, an area of Poland that's been disputed between Russia and Germany and um, Yugoslavia um, and over and over again. So governments come and go. The one thing that's there, the one place that he always sends snapshots and, and records from are the churches because governments have come and gone, and the but the cemetery, and the, the cemetery and the church has yeah. been there. And so it's an amazing thing to see. I'm gonna uh, grab this real quick. Uh, I wanna make sure we get a really good shot of that so that we can make sure that we've got everybody looking at it. We're gonna grab some social media links from you and website links and book links so that we can share those on the web. She's holding up that silly card which tells me I have to shut up. She does that quite frequently. Uh, as I do that, though, I'm going to say thank you to our partners and our friends at Something Unique Magazine, Famous Faces and Funnies, Krypton Radio, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, Space Coast Comics, Asylum Convention Entertainment Services, our great friends at iHeart Books. Remember, everybody out there, subscribe to the channel, come back over and over again, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Wow. <laughs>